Hello, this is Mocha Product Manager Martin Brennan, and today we're going to be getting rid of a man. There's always one. That extra who wanted a bit more screen time, the relative you didn't expect to turn up at the wedding video, or in this case, the random bystander who gawks at the filming going on because the council wouldn't let you close off the street for a simple shoot. At any rate, this is what the Mocha Remove tool was designed for, getting rid of things, and people, who shouldn't be there. The main problem with Mr. Stanley McGorker over here, however, is he's always in one place. So the only option we have is clean plates, i.e. we're going to have to paint him out ourselves and then let Mocha handle the rest. Our shot today is provided by Pond5, who stock a pretty amazing selection of video. So to start off inside After Effects, we're going to load the Mocha effect and then just click the large friendly button at the top. This loads our Mocha GUI and we can get started. The first thing we need to do is roto out the actor's shoulder so it doesn't interfere with any of the other layers we need to make for this remove. We will choose the X-Spline tool to draw our shape and roughly get the outline, making sure to track outside the edges rather than internally. We're going to do a basic shear track as there isn't a lot of perspective change. We don't care too much about planar accuracy here because the shoulder is an organic shape and will naturally fall off to reveal more of the sides. The rest of the shoulder we'll just have to tweak manually. So once we have our shape and our parameters set up, we can now go ahead and track forwards and just adjust the shape as we go to make sure that it still fits over the shoulder. After a point, the shoulder is no longer going to interfere with the remove, so we can stop and trim the layer down. There's no point in doing more work than we actually have to. Rather than refining this roto at this point, however, I'm going to leave the rough shape for now because I want to make sure it doesn't interfere with the next couple of tracks. The next important track is the bystander. We're going to grab our trusty x tool and draw this shape as close as possible to what we want to remove, so we don't need to clean up as much. We then drag the layer below the shoulder layer as Mocha assumes top layers are in the foreground and lower layers are in the background. Very importantly, you should also remember to turn off previously tracked layers. It's good to get in the habit of doing this so that you don't accidentally retrack layers later on. I'm also going to turn on track mats under the mat view button so we can make sure the shoulder is always being cut out of the bystander track. We then track our bystander layer backwards and forwards from the drawing point to get the overall motion. The good thing about this bystander is he's actually standing still, so there's actually not a much additional roto to do here and it's much easier than the shoulder was. For the final layer, we need to draw a background layer. Now, I'm doing something slightly different to normal cases here. In most Mocha removes, you'd be encouraged to track all the planes in the scene that make up the background in order to get accuracy. The wall, the floor, and the back plane. This is because parallax in a lot of moving scenes will make your remove disjointed if you don't track the individual planes. Here, because the background is so blurry and we don't have much obvious parallax, we're going to just wing it and use a single layer. The point I want to emphasize here is that you should make Mocha work for you as you see fit. Sometimes breaking the rules helps you rather than hinders you, and in the case of removes, if the audience never knew it was there, they're not really going to look. So now we're just going to do what we did for the previous layer. I'm going to drag my layer down to the bottom of the stack, I'm going to turn on my track mats just so I can see that cutout. We'll rename our layer to something interesting like background. And I'm going to turn off the previous layer's cog. So we're going to set the minimum percentage of pixels quite high. And I'm also going to turn the surface and the grid on. This is really important to see how the accuracy of your background track is going. Because the background track is the most important one to get the tracking accuracy correct. Otherwise you're going to get artifacts and problems in your remove. So we're just making sure that's tracking correctly throughout the shot using that surface and grid tool. You'll also notice here that I need to extend the shoulder timeline that I trimmed earlier as it's still interfering with the background track. The good thing is you can re-extend and keep moving your layers around as you go so there's no harm done. Once we've finished refining the shoulder mat so that the track is no longer interfered with, we continue on with our background track until the end and then just quickly scrub through the shot to make sure the track is looking accurate. 
So when we play it back, you can see now that this track is nice and accurate. The grid is showing us that it's not bouncing around too much, so we're going to get a good remove off that background plate. Now, what we need to do is fix up that shoulder so that it is accurately against the shoulder edge, because this shoulder edge is going to be cut out of our final remove patch. So now we just need to go back and refine all of that matte edge to make it nice and clean. To refine the shoulder, we're going to turn on the Quick Stabilize mode, which will simply take the tracking data from our layer and lock its position based on the motion. This makes it much easier to work with moving objects while we're refining an edge. Then, using the Point Insert tool, we're going to go through and find all the little bumps and dips in the jacket to make sure they're covered accurately with additional control points, smoothing those curves out where necessary using the X-spline handles. If you're having a hard time seeing the edge, you can turn off the colorize mode in the mats, which will cut the area out for easier viewing. You can also turn on invert mat in the layer properties to see if any of those edges are bleeding out of the shape. Using a combination of these views, we go through and refine the shape throughout the necessary covered areas. When you're done, you should make sure none of that edge is peeking through, or it may be used as part of the remove render and show odd artifacts. Once all our layers are primed and ready, it's time to select our bystander layer and move over to the remove module to set up the parameters. Make sure the first and last frame parameters match your project in and out points. This will avoid it referencing frames that you're not using. Also turn on auto step. This is not always necessary, especially since we're using clean plates, but in other cases it saves you having to manually work out which frames to step over. By default, the frames before and frames after values take the max range of the clip, so we want to reduce this down to a more realistic value. Here, there are actually less than 100 frames in the clip, but I'm just going to set it to 100 as that will be fast enough for my needs, and Mocha is smart enough to stop looking if the frame count ends before that value. Now for the tricky part. Since our bystander is not moving, we need to paint him out manually. There's not much we can do about this, but we'll just have to save out our clean plate and get painting. We want to find a frame that's as close as possible, but doesn't obscure any detail. Here on frame 454, we get up nice and close, and we can still see his feet, so it's a good place to start. Too far forward in the sequence, and it doesn't have much detail, so all we need to do now is hit the Create button and save our clean plate out to disk. Over in Photoshop, we can now begin the clean plating process. I'm not going to show the whole paint process here, because frankly, it's going to vary so much from case to case, it's not worth going into too much detail. The main thing is, I tend to use a combination of the clone stamp tool and the patch tool, and you want to try and grab samples as close to the offending object as possible, so you maintain detail in the blur without looking repetitive. So here's our final result painted out. We just need now to save this and go back over to Mocha. So if we go back to frame 454 and look at our clean plate, we can now see it's painted out on the right frame. If we open up the edit dialog, you can see that our frame is in the clean plate list, and we can add to this list if we need further frames down the track. The next thing I'm going to do is check Use Clean Plates Exclusively. There is literally no point in not checking this option because we can't reference anything else in the background to help remove this shot. This will also improve the rendering performance significantly because we're not needing to check any other frames for reference. Now I'm going to do a test render back on the first frame of the sequence to see how it's looking. First up, we'll turn off our overlays with the button up here, or use the shortcut backtick key so we can see the shot without the splines being in the way, and then we can click render. And as you can see here, it's not looking great. There's a definite edge to the patch. This is because we're using a single plate across the whole shot, and the light is varying over time as the camera moves. So this is where we start using the illumination tools from top to bottom to find the best result. Let's first try with linear. Linear is a nice way to adjust lighting progressively through a shot. And here you can see this isn't really helping either. The light being pulled in is actually darkening our shot too much. So now we're going to try interpolated illumination, which will be much better at looking at the subtle changes over time. Now, keep in mind, interpolated illumination modeling is much, much more performance intensive than the other rendering modes, as it's calculating how light is changing on every single frame. However, it's a lot faster when using clean plates exclusively, because again, we're only having to reference specific frames. 
So rendering with this on, you can see we're getting a much more realistic result. There's still a subtle halo edge here, so we're going to fix this by turning back on our spline and selecting all the points, then adding some edge width to the remove shape to pull it out a bit further. Now when we render the remove, it's much cleaner and we can test a few more frames to see how it's looking across the shot. This looks good, so it's time to save and close and then render back to the main host timeline. Back in the After Effects interface, we twirl down the module render section, choose remove from the module dropdown and click render. So removing unwelcome people from video is easy enough to do with the Mocha Remove module. It saves you the hassle of a reshoot, and then you can get back to more interesting tasks, like invoicing. If you have any questions, as always, please jump over to the forums at borisfx.com. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.